Congratulations, 2021 graduating class of the George Washington University. Welcome from the Smithsonian. I'm so pleased to join you on this joyous occasion and to celebrate this milestone with you. As someone who spent a decade as a professor at GW, I am particularly moved to speak with you today. You're probably wondering why they chose me. Though I think it's because I am a graduate of a liberal arts college with a degree in history and a job. So don't worry, parents, your kids are gonna be okay. Graduates, this moment is a celebration of your hard work, diligence, and focus. You may not have known exactly what you wanted to do when you started this adventure. You still may not know, but your time at college will shape your life. I know it did for me. But you had to carry an added burden. You had to navigate the challenges of a college during a global pandemic that took a physical, emotional, and economic toll on all of us. Normally, you would have been seated on the folding chairs in the lush grass of the National Mall, the swath of public land stretching from the Capitol to the Lincoln Memorial. Working at the Smithsonian allows me to see the preparation every year, and it's a special honor as only GW has its graduation on the Mall. Not only does it evoke fond memories of my time at GW, it fills me with hope for the future. I'm sorry we can't be in person this year, COVID has changed so much for all of us. And if the trauma of the pandemic wasn't enough, you also graduate at a time when the nation is shaped by racial and social injustice, by gun violence and a looming climate crisis. I wish I could assure you that it would get easier, that things will get better. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee of that. But moments of adversity are part of the human condition. What matters though, is how we respond to these moments. Adversity, like your education, can prepare you for the world, can instill empathy, can inspire action. So to do what is expected as a commencement speaker, in addition to keeping it brief, let me share with you some of the thoughts that have shaped my life. When I entered in college, I always believed that once I graduated, the clouds would part, my future would be clear in front of me, and that calm certainty would be my lot in life. Boy, was I wrong. Trust me when I tell you that your life will unfold in ways you can't conceive of. I never imagined working at the National Museum of American History or that I would leave that dream job. I didn't envision coming back to help the Smithsonian build the National Museum of African American History and Culture or how difficult that process would be. And I certainly never thought that one day I'd become secretary of the Smithsonian or that soon thereafter, the world's worst health crisis in a century would force us to close our museums to our visitors. You too will face surprising challenges and opportunities, disappointments and failure, and difficult choices. As your life unfolds, as the years zip by, you'll have to learn how to embrace ambiguity and change. Your lives will require a nimbleness that would have been unimaginable for your grandparents. Another thing I've found is that the friends you made at GW and the professors that you've learned from will be with you the rest of your lives, whether in person or in spirit. Reach out to them, ask for help when you need it, because no one is an island. Life is hard enough to navigate without doing it alone, especially now we need to support and sustenance from family, friends, and sometimes even strangers. I found that out for myself when I was about 13 in the New Jersey town where I grew up, I was one of only a few African-Americans. One day I was in an unfamiliar part of town playing baseball, the game I loved, when the neighborhood game unexpectedly turned to violence. For reasons I don't understand, a mob of white teenagers attacked me. They chased me with baseball bats and rocks. I can still remember the terror I felt all these years later. I ran until my legs gave out, collapsing on a front lawn of a random house. Just as the mob came up the driveway towards me with bad intentions, a little blonde girl came out of the house and said defiantly, this is my house, this is my property, get off my land. Not to me, to them. She fearlessly stood between us. She rescued me at that moment. And at that moment, I learned that help comes from unlikely places and that the generosity of spirit binds our humanity, 
irrespective of race, religion, or background. Though I never saw her again, she is indelibly seared in my memory. The incident changed me. Not only did it stimulate my interest in history, it helped me understand why race mattered so much, but it taught me never to generalize, never to stereotype people. It also taught me that no matter how fast, how smart, or how tough we are, there are times when we need to draw sustenance, inspiration, and guidance from others. Never be afraid to ask for help or to accept it when it's offered. That fierce little girl also set an example that I'm still inspired by. She showed the power of standing up for what is right. During my time in Chicago, I got to know Studs Terkel, the great oral historian who dedicated his life to giving voice to the voiceless, who never met a strike or a picket line he didn't like. In his later years, he said to me, you know, Lonnie, I can't hear anymore, I can't see much, I can't stand up. So all I ask you to do is to point me in the direction where I can do good. If the events of the past year have taught us anything, it's that this world needs more people who live by that ethos, people who point themselves in the direction of doing good, irrespective of personal cost. If you have that commitment to do good, you'll be able to handle the adversity, you'll be able to embrace the ambiguity and change that life is all about. So let me end as I began by congratulating this wonderful class of 2021. But let me also urge you to use this education, these skills, this opportunity you've been afforded as a chance to do good for others, to contribute to making America a better, kinder place, one that embodies its loftiest principles and lives up to its most cherished ideals. So on this day of celebrating your hard-won accomplishment, I wish you a life of joy, peace, surprise, and wonder. But most importantly, I wish you a life of purpose and doing good for others. Thank you. Good luck to all.